Shakti from Southern India Chamber of Commerce. I would like to welcome everyone to our session. And I would like to welcome our uh, Sikki Insurance Committee Chair, Mr. Arunachalam, sir, who is a director of uh, Bharat Tree Insurance Broker. And we have uh, initiated this idea because for uh, MSMEs and SMEs uh, industry people. And I, I think this uh, session will be very useful to you. And if you have any questions related to the session, please keep, uh, feel free to drop your uh, thoughts in the chat box. I would like to uh, request Mr. Arnachalam sir to take over the session. Thank you, Ms. Kanti. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, my name is Arunachalam. Uh, I'm very happy to host this session for you. Um, the topic for the day will be do's and don'ts uh, for flood insurance claims. As all of us are aware, uh, the focus today is to how to best advise uh, SMEs and MSMEs and what they should uh, look for when it comes to number one, ensuring their business interest, and number two, uh, what they should do to uh, possibly force through or, or uh, carry their insurance claim in case there is a loss that they face because of an insured event. Uh, today's focus for this session could be flood insurance, but uh, what we discussed today could be relevant to uh, many other situations also. So I'm very happy to host this session uh, as part of uh, Southern India Chamber of Commerce Insurance Committee activities. We hope to bring similar sessions in the succeeding month. Uh, I'm very happy to present to you two very senior, experienced insurance professionals. First, uh, we have Mr. Sampath Kumar uh, sitting next to me. Sampath Kumar uh, put in uh, uh, close to 40 years experience in the insurance domain uh, in organizations like Oriental Insurance Company and uh, uh, Royal Sundaram and Future Generally. Uh, he had held senior positions in two major activities. One is underwriting, which is the process of evaluating and accepting risk for insurance. And in, in claims, he also handled claims for, uh, for uh, these insurance companies. So uh, I'm sure for this discussion, Mr. Sampath's views on do's and don'ts on flood insurance could be very helpful. I'm also happy to present uh, my colleague, Mr. K. Venkatesan. Uh, Mr. Victor, uh, welcome to the session. Mr. Venkatesan also has put in close to 35 years experience in the insurance domain. He has worked in organizations like uh, Oriental Insurance, uh, IFCO Tokyo, uh, SBA General, and currently he holds a senior position in Bharat Free Insurance Brokers. Uh, the topic for the day and the focus area for the day will be what should uh, owner of a business enterprise can be a shop, can be a store, can be a small manufacturing company, can be a mid-sized manufacturing company, can be a can be a, a go-down or a warehouse. Uh, and an MSME or an SME owner, what he should look for, what he should take care of when it comes to insurance. As uh, anybody would realize, insurance is not a top priority till a fire happens or an explosion happens or a flood happens or a cyclone hits. It doesn't take front seat. Uh, but we should not wait for such a such a uh, incident to take place to look at insurance. The purpose of this session is to share with the members uh, who, uh, who are participating today some insights, the inside point of view as to what is best to be done when it comes to insuring the assets and what is also good to know when it comes to making claims. So let me start the discussion with Mr. Sampath Kumar. Uh, uh, welcome uh, to the discussion, Mr. Sampath. Yeah. So we're going to talk about uh, SMEs and MSMEs. So I'm not going to talk about large industries. Uh, if it does an SME and MSME who is running his business, before we look at claims, when it comes to careful insurance, uh, what what do you think when he looks at an insurance policy? Let's say top five uh, features of the policy you should look at. One, primary, everybody should insure themselves. Two, they should read the policy. Three, they should check whether Whatever they want stands covered. What uh, or in some substance, there are a lot of circumstances where the location is not properly described and the wrong location is covered. Then there can be circumstances where the missionary or stocks or whatever description that the business owner has may not potentially be rightly issued. So primarily we start with these two steps. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm going to repeat this question to Mr. Venkatesan because there are so many features of an insurance policy to look at. I would uh, bounce from Mr. Venkatesan. Uh, sir, what do you think a business owner, let me say he's an SME owner, he's a manufacturer, 
is not building plant machinery and stocks inside his premises. Uh, if uh, if insurance policy is presented to him, he has paid the premium. The first top five things he should look at in the policy. I'm trying to simplify a very important feature, but that's a starting point for a discussion. Yeah. Uh, so so one of the one of the first uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so one of the first thing that uh, should run as an underlying thread when you look at insurances. Insurance should be seen more as a business continuity. It's not something that, you know, it's not in the forefront, so it's not required. No. When there is a time of distress, this is the tool which is going to run the, which is going to come, give continuity to the running of the business. Having said that, the important things which an insured or a client should check in a policy, see the policy consists of two main uh, Component. One is the printed documents, which contains the contract terms and conditions. Another is what the insurers like to call a schedule, which identifies the particular information pertaining to your business. Your business's name, address, what is your business doing, is the location address right, is the sum insured mentioned adequately. And last but not the least, has there been any conditions which have been mentioned in the policy? They have the effect of seeing the beneficial effect of your policy. For example, you don't have a 24 hour security and the policy says it's presumed, it says warranted you have a 24 hour security which might cause problems later on. So a careful reading of the one or two page schedule, as Mr. Samba correctly said, does it reflect what you wanted to cover in your policy? That would be. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to come back to you on the very important topic which touch, which is warranties. We'll come back to that. A uh, good part of this discussion should be on how to correctly insure, and then dominant part has to be claims. Uh, Mr. Sampath, uh, this question is for you. Uh, when it comes to uh, my understanding of uh, insuring business interest, let's say for a small factory owner, uh, today, what choice would he have to insure? Does he have a choice of insurance policies, or it is conditioned? What are the options that he has? If I want, to, I want to buy a car, I may have a choice of 30 different cars, very different business. When it comes to insuring, let's say fire insurance for a manufacturing enterprise or for a warehouse, what kind of insurance products are there in the market and do I have a choice? Over the years, market has evolved very fine. But primarily, there are package products. For a small industry, it's almost a set of policy which gives you predefined coverage. But there are always choices. I don't know whether you intentionally touched upon. It was about business interruption. Primarily, what we are talking about is the property coverage. Like whatever property we have, be it a shop or an industry, we are concerned about whatever is there inside that that goes into a trade. It can be a simple trading or into manufacturing activity. But there is something, some physical asset which gives you or which uh, which is the running thread of the business that needs to be insured and there are standard set of perils which we call as fire and allied perils fire and special perils policy which has around 14 perils but primarily we will not go into very deep into it what we would like to cover is primarily fire which instantly will take care of flood and inundation also though fire I mean, water and fire could be uh, diversely different things then as Benedict had already pointed out that would be something like a burglary. <laughs> Unfortunately, the business will have to come to a grinding or either due to a flood or a fire or any other activity. Now, there could be a situation where the factory will have to be rebuilt or machinery will have to be brought in. That the insurance company likely will pay you. Uh, to the nearest section possible. But this three, four months of activity is going to put the business owner in a very bad shape. So depending on his mindset, depending on his preparedness and understanding, he can go in for business interruption policies. Yeah. So you, you spoke about the choice in terms of can you ensure the fire and alert bills alone, or would you like to ensure burglary and theft, or should it ensure even uh, business interruption, right? But Ms. Venkatesan, I want you to explain to the audience about uh, how the market is structured in terms of choice of insurance products, uh, one parameter being some insured. 
Yeah. Today, if you see, uh, like uh, I give an example, I, I have a small factory. Will it make a difference if the sum insured is let's say 30 crores, and the second factory next door, the sum insured is 75 crores? What is the product that will fit my my fire insurance? So, if you look at it, uh, let me present it this way: the perils covered are roughly the same. The products available are slightly different, but subtle differences. It's like you're buying a, a kg of uh, you know coffee powder for a bigger family and uh, 50 grams for a smaller family. So for uh, where the asset size is less than let's say five crores in a single location, we talk about in a location. So let's say a tiny sector thing. There is a regulated product which is common across all companies. They call it Sukshma Udayan product, which covers, as I told earlier, roughly the same perils that which some of the the man made perils such as rights. Some insured has to be less than five crores. Per location, value in yeah. a single location less than five crores. And uh, it covers uh, accidental risk such as fire or explosion. Well, uh, natural. I mean, now, where the sum insured between 5 and 50 crores single location limit, uh, we are talking about uh, sort of MSME or some kind of a thing. Those are, I think there's some disturbance. Yeah, admin can mute the uh, other part of it. Please. So, uh, when we look at those of the risks which are the 5 and 50 crores per location, the a similar policy such as this is available, which uh, is called Lapu. Go ahead. So, which covers the same risk, but applicable for uh, some insured in 5 crores and 50 crores. And for those who are above 50 crores, uh, there's a standard fire policy, which again covers the same period. The comfort for the SME and MSME. Uh, Please mute yourself. So the for the, uh, yeah. So the comfort for the my SME and uh, MSME players is that the Lagu and so policies have a lot of internal uh, you know comforts built into the policy that they they were under insurance of errors on the part of the uh, entrepreneur that I'm ensuring. I'm not right, talking so about large, large yeah. in the over 100. Yeah. Value at risk in a location, the market is structured. If the uh, sum total of my building, plant, machinery and stocks yeah. is less than 5 crores, I go for a Sushma Udayan product. There's no other choice. If no. I have a, uh, my sum total of building plant and machinery stock is between 5 crores and 50 crores, I go for a Lagu, not that I go for it, the market can that's, offer that's, a Lagu that's, 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 uh, product, Lagu Udayam Suraksha, that's the name of the product. And with the sum insured of building plant and machinery and stocks put together is over 50 crores, I go for a standard fire engine stock. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, just for uh, emphasizing that bit of it, because some of them could have been lost in the green of the battle uh, line. The Lagu and Sukshma policies have been uh, regulated by the regulator and offered to the market with a lot of add ons and some so that the small and medium entrepreneur need not have to rack his brain in understanding the finer nuances and giving uh, and getting a maximum benefit out of this. Okay. Perfect. Now, uh, coming to the uh, other important uh, issues of insurance, because why I am talking about the coverage and insurance first. If that is going to decide the fate of claims. Uh, Mr. Sampath, uh, can you just explain in a manner a simple business owner can understand the importance of adequately covering insured for 10 crores? If something happens, uh, I don't think the loss would be more than 10 crores. Let me buy a policy for 10 crores. So, what does it, what kind of difference does it make to insure a 30 crore factory for 30 crore and the same 30 crore factory for 10 crore? What kind of difference is it? Yes, sir. So, slightly give a longer reply to whatever you have been asking. 
like you have been phrasing it in such a manner you are talking about 10 crore 30 crore and all that but from the insurance from whatever experience we have had we more importantly the policy holder the person who is taking the policy needs to understand the exact requirement in terms of value also a simple example would be we are sitting in front of a lenovo laptop what would be its value though every one of us know say a simple laptop with a ordinary configuration would cost something around 60000 in the market then 60000 is what we talk as the sum insured or the value of the property but this 60000 this small example can differ from person to person at the manufacturer place say at lenovo this would cost somewhere around 20000 maybe after the factory gate with all the additions of duty or try x x whatever it could be 30000 the dealer may get it at 40000 a sub dealer or a showroom owner or a simple trader may have it at 50000 a person like us the end user may buy it at 60000 so the same commodity can have differential values for each person and very similarly like whenever we take insurance we tend to get our mindset with a fixed value the 10 crore will do and these policies are mostly annual in nature so as on first april you take a policy for say three crores what will happen in the peak say maybe during the world season maybe during pongal season december a trader gets in a lot of product now you have a single policy you have a single place and your sum insured is already fixed the sudden hike in the sum insured may not be adequate to cover the value that you have in the place yeah i get so my man looking for sir for uh, in a simpler way for a business owner to understand the uh, how under insurance would operate i have a, a factory put together the entire value is 30 crores if I'm uh, the, the correct way of doing it is I take a policy 30 crores, I'm correctly insured, fully insured. Uh, there is no impact of under insurance on a claim. Uh, instead of uh, 30 crores, I take a policy by only for 10 crores. So there is a 33 percent value only taken, 66 percent I'm under insured. How does it impact the claim? So if I have taken a policy for 10 crores, my loss is only 5 crores. Because I have a policy for 10 crores, will I get 5 crores in full or will I get the anything? Yes. It's not claim dependent, it is sum insured dependent. Yeah. So what will happen is at every point of time, whenever there is a claim, the insurer will be comparing the value that ought to have been insured in the sense, the property, the, the property value at that place, at that location. On the date of loss. Yes, on the date of loss. And compare it with the sum insured. So if it is going to be high, there will not be any issue. If it is going to be less, the concept of condition of average, what we call under insurance will apply. In simple terms, my property value is 10 crore. I take a policy for 5 crore. So 5 crore is insured, 5 crore is uninsured, meaning I keep the risk on myself. So 50% risk is on me. Yes. That means any claim that is reported, yes. whatever be the value, 50% I have to pay. Yes. That's how under insurance law operates, which is a very important feature yes. Yes. of an insurance policy. Uh, uh, Mr. Venkatesan, since you brought up the topic of warranties, uh very very important for a policy holder or a business owner to be aware of uh, warranties as a restrictive feature you mentioned in the previous example warranty about uh, cctv camera being there in the burglary policy but i would uh, bring our discussion yeah. to a yeah. uh, participant to mute please yeah. mr mute please Thank you. Uh, can, can you give examples of what kind of warranties have you seen in a fire insurance policy? Our discussion is about an MSME or an SME owner. He's got a policy issued by him by any insurance company. There are 35 insurance companies, let's say. Uh, what could be surprising when a claim comes? There's a warranty in the policy which is impacting the claim. Can I give you some small examples? So first, I I give a simpler understanding of the warranty for these people uh, on these things. Yeah. So warranty, though it sounds a little big, what it simply means, 
is the presumption of the insurer or the assumption of the insurer about the risk which is reflected in the contract. So if the contract says, again, for the simplicity of the example, if the contract says warranted as a 24 hour security, it means the insurer says, I presume you have 24 hour security, and if you don't have, my contract is not fully valid. I'm making it very simple for the fact. So the warranty has an effect of it reflects what the insurer thinks is the risk, and in actuality, if it is not so, it has an effect of affecting. So in fire insurance, what have we seen in, in, in day to day claims? Where we've seen these warranties come into play. Uh, we have seen cases where the insurer the places a warranty in the policy which says you have adequate firefighting. FEA, what they call FEA warranty. They say FEA warranty, and sometimes it's very subjective. It says warranted the risk as adequate firefighting. So what is adequate fire? What is adequate? Now that's open to drain. So if it's objective, it's difficult. If it says there is 20 firefighting uh, hand appliances should be there, yes, it could have an effect on the claim if there are only 90. But at least that is something that we can uh, But Mr. Raji, please may also says. So uh, at least that you know for a finite number what you have to do. But a subjective statement like warranted adequate firefighting to be in place, that's going to leave the claim or want a better word, let me say, at the mercy of the insurer to decide whether to pay, pay and if so, how much to pay because he has undertaken the contract assuming that there are adequate firefighting uh, appliances from his perception. Yeah. And that may not always reflect the perception of the asset. So yeah. it's important in the policy, you see what are those conditions which may have an effect. Correct. So it's a precaution a customer should take to ensure there are either no warranties in the policy or they are minimum. Number one. Number two, you should understand the implication of the warranty. Correct. So minimum warranties are part, you should also know those warranties actually reflect the real situation. Yeah. So if you have 20 warranties, yeah. if all those 20 warranties are actually complied with, it's okay. Correct. So, sir, uh, the, I mean, bring the uh, discussion to a realistic position. You can't escape warranties. Yeah. Uh, no insurer will agree to remove FEA warranty. That's basic and fundamental, which means uh, uh, an MSME or an SME owner should be aware that whether there is insurance or not, his building should be protected against the fire. Uh, he has to comply with the fire protection manual, which means depending on the nature of the activity there, he has to fix hand appliances, what is fixed on the wall, which may be of different types, uh, foam or CO2, whatever powder, dry powder type, or he may have to use a hose reel or a hydrant, depending on the size of the, uh, so that is uh, how this will operate. Yeah. Uh, uh, you want to add to that? Yes, definitely. See, basically, insurance is a contract. Insurer on the one hand and the policy holder who takes policy on the other. Now, as we were describing earlier, there are terms and conditions which may be a bit difficult to read and understand, but there is always a schedule which is direct and clear describing whatever the property that is being issued. Now, most of the properties are in buildings. The building could be owned by the policy holder, may not be. And Chennai has experienced very difficult rains in 90s. In fact, in 1970s, I remember, Photogram was entirely underwater. Then 2005, 2015, then in between there were a lot of cyclones. Many of the policies carry a very difficult warranty called basement warranty, which will best say exclude whatever is there in the basement. There can be situations where the building has a basement, but you don't have any property there. Maybe it's something like utilities, transformers, lift, something else is there. You don't own any property. Or you may be running a shop of, say, ground plus three floors plus basement, and you keep every stock on the basement in your policy. Basement is excluded. This will have to be stated. Yeah, so uh, um, when it comes to what is relevant to uh, our topic today, 
which is do's and don'ts for flood insurance claim. We are talking about the first part, which is how to carefully take insurance. What we want to share with the participants today is uh, beware of warranties. Uh, maybe you cannot escape warranties, but understand the implication of these warranties. So what is relevant for today's discussion is this based on warranty. Whatever is the asset is not covered at all. Even if you have paid premium on the value, if the, the moment the insurer puts in the schedule, yes. just two words. And the basement warranty. warranty can be removed. Is the basement warranty explained by a clause or is it not explained at all? It is explained by words. It, it is explained in detail. Would all and insurers impose this warranty or some insurers may not? Almost equal. Okay. And it is uh, something that the customer can request that basement warranty should be removed. If you can make the insurer exactly understand what the risk is, how is your basement placed? Whether you have adequate precautions in ensuring that water will not accumulate. And if insurer can understand that the area is not a place which is commonly flooded, there may be with additional premium or without actual premium, there will be an equation. They will be willing to remove the placement warranty. What's the dilemma there? Because I know a five star hotel in Chennai, uh, mm -hmm. they had two basements. They had uh, water up to the road level. Two basements have been uh, completely covered in water. One basement was uh, full of uh, the hotel stocks, water required groceries and other stocks required for the hotel operation. The upper basement was their office, the GM's office, the uh, CFO's office, and the other office, banquet office. So, completely right up to the roof, covered by water. So, it is deadly for such a policy holder to allow a basement warranty to be in. Okay. So, the difference is. I may have a factory, I may have a warehouse and no basement at all. Even if basement warranty is there, I don't have to worry because it's not going to operate. I don't have anything in the basement. But if I have basement exposure, that means I have uh, my EV panel room, my DG set, car parking, or any other asset in the basement, I may be even an entire business located in a basement, right? Yes. Where there is a, a, a furniture showroom. They had a street level showroom with about maybe 30, 40, 50 lakh worth of furniture. They had about three or four crores worth of uh, furniture stock kept in the basement. Their policy had a basement warranty and it was affected by 2015 flood and the entire claim was denied because the basement warranty was operated. So it's very important for our uh, audience to be aware of warranties in general. Warranties like uh, FEA warranty will not be removed even if you negotiate. You need to make sure that the building complies with the building uh, fire protection uh, uh, regulations, which means if you're running a business, you may be even a doctor's clinic, but you need to provide a firefighting hand appliance on the wall. If you're a manufacturing uh, uh, location, the fire department will prescribe you know, minimum fire protection. Please mute. What is the minimum uh, uh, fire protection required for the building? If you're a chemical manufacturer, maybe. Uh, more investment is required for protecting the building to comply with fire protection manual and also to comply with the FAA warranty in the policy. But the, coming back to our discussions on the flood, uh, Mr. Mikitesan, uh, when it comes to a typical flood claim, uh, Chennai has been seeing floods which repeat even a one day, one day, one evening rain can bring in major uh, flood uh, collection of water. So I, I'm talking as a, let's say, an MSME owner. Uh, what can happen is water enters my premises, I can't stop it. It has affected my plant and machinery, it has affected my stocks. So what should I do to take action? The first part of action we have discussed for half an hour now, uh, some aspects of what is the correct way of insuring, correct uh, sum insured, then correct features in the policy and to beware warranties. But the second part is I have taken a Correct insurance policy, values are right. I know what is warranties and I made sure that I'm safe. But when I, I'm faced with a flood situation, water has entered, what's my action? Uh, how do I take action? What are my obligations under the policy to initiate a claim? So there are two, three quick things and generic things to remember, and most of the documentation flows from these uh, facts. One, the underlying principle of any insurance is you might act as though you are uninsured. Forget about your insurance policy. If you didn't have insurance policy, for example, you may have moved your stocks to a higher location in the water study. So it is a expectation and a quite a genuine expectation of the insurers that you should act as though you are uninsured. That's number one. 
Number two, in the event of it moving into practicing into a claim, it's moving into a situation where it's going to become a claim. There are two broad responsibilities for every issue. You make me a simple particular. One, you have to prove that the loss happened due to the covered event. So you're covered flood, you have to prove that the loss is due to floods. Now, earlier we used to call a surveyor while the water was on and uh, you know take film, take photographs. But today, with the advent of everyone holding a mobile on that, it's it's absolutely imperative that you take photos or videos of the loss while the flood waters are there. That's going to strengthen your case when you go to talk to the insurance, especially give an idea as to what are the height of the water level and help you determining what would be the loss. Yes. Two, you have to also establish the quantum. Having established that you lost or got damages due to flood, how much did you get that? You will need to have documentation. Yes. So broadly, step one, act as if you're uninsured. Two, Ensure that you are able to establish the losses due to the covered event, in this case, flood. Three, prove the quantum by which your papers invoice. The procedure is, uh, Ms. Sasikara, please mute yourself. The procedure is uh, when, uh, when a flood uh, is uh, reported, I mean, I experience a flood, I intimate my insurance company. And what happens after that? What is the procedure? Would yeah. they visit the site or who will visit the site? Successful, but then see some of the learnings that we had in 2015 floods and thereafter is that's a time where you don't have enough, uh, let's say, the human infrastructure in terms of surveyors to attend to all the losses. You got a situation where in a day you got thousand units for in claim. So at times it takes more than a couple of days for the surveyor to visit. So without putting a time element towards the sequence of event, you report to the insurance company. The insurance company and you were would be expected to say what in your estimate is your loss. Uh, rough uh, estimate of loss. Because the surveyors are deputed based on the Size intensity of the, of the loss. So if there's a 50 lakh claim and a 5 crore claim, the background of surveyors would be different. Could be different. Could be different. So you'll have surveyors with difficulty of premises. Day one would be just to have a you know cursory look at the place, take a few photographs. Thereafter, you have to do paperwork to establish the quantum of, and that will be over multiple meetings or exchange of things. And once you establish the quantum, some amount of the loss, if it's a large loss, insurers, and I mean all insurers are open to giving you an ad hoc payment. Interim, interim, interim place payment to place orders for your machinery and move forward. And if it moves along those lines, after you establish the, after you repair, replace your thing. You provide invoices and proof of payments to get a full system. So, uh, Mr. Rampath, I want to continue that particular thing Mr. Venkatesh mentioned about the policy holder establishing the quantum of loss. So, what, what do we have to do to establish the quantum of loss? Because the policy condition would say the insured should establish the loss, uh, the quantum of loss. So, what, what kind of records are expected by the insurer and the surveyor? Suppose I go for a a, um, a reconstruction of my building, damage by flood. I'm going to spend about 50 lakhs to reconstruct. Uh, I may have to place order for machinery, which is covered by flood water. I'm going to replace the machinery. So what kind of documentation? Yes. Yes. In every time situation, especially in, in terms of fire. We talk about flood, sir, because today's is flood. Yes. Sir. So you have to maybe compare flood and fire. That makes life very difficult because everything goes in average. Flood is slightly easier because people can still access the property, maybe in a day, maybe in two days, three days, whatever. It's also the fact that you don't have to prove a flood. Yes. In, in the fire, you have to prove that it there will be the cause of flood. Yes. We are not getting into that part. Yeah. Now, flood as it is establishment, establishment of flood need not be big. We'll go by the available evidences. It can be meteorological report, it can be paper cuttings, it can be simple circumstantial evidence. So it's it's fairly simple, but as regulation was telling, the height of inundation or the water level, if that can be established by way of photograph, videograph, that makes life easier. Especially if a surveyor could come after a day or if there if there were to be a slight delay. Yeah. No. Whenever there is a claim, one you identify the property damage. You keep them aside. 
you try to minimize the loss. You also try to tell exactly how much is the quantity that is. Like you went into building part. Building part can be different, machinery part can be different, part can be different. Each will have their own challenges. Now, depending on whatever part is done, an estimate will have to be prepared. The surveyor who is authorized by IID at Closest Logic will have sufficient understanding of this. And wherever there appears to be a gap, insurance can fit in and have multiple discussions. Usually, surveyors are engineering professionals. They are engineering professionals. Generally, insurance companies place surveyors who know the uh, uh, trade of the climate. Yeah. There can be stock situation, there can be a building situation which may require a civil engineer. So, depending on the expert we can. So, one is the estimate. When it comes to documentation, is there a one, two, three, four list of documents? I mean, a short list. Primarily, it is about how we are going to say uh, battery over damages. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to repair? Yeah. Are you going to replace them? So, depending on that, you will get the estimates. Surveyor will come and uh, we'll check on that and we'll suggest that some part may be repaired or we'll go with the replacement. Yeah, so I want to bring in that I'm staying, so staying with you before going back to Mr. Uh, we want to talk about challenges uh, an MSME owner would face when it comes to establishing the loss. Uh, I'll take a simple example. Uh, when it comes to machinery, the frequent dispute is uh, my machinery was covered by water. I faced actually an actual case in 2015. Uh, factory, uh, which manufacturing panel board was uh, underwater, eight feet water. The surveyor came and inspected. Uh, stocks which are damaged, he said, okay, let me uh, have the stock uh, cost value. But it comes to machinery, what survey is saying, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to pay for the new machinery. I'll allow cleaning cost, which is a major difference. What the customer expected is, it is covered by water, it is a new machinery, and it, I manufacture it. It can't be sold the new machinery. So I want replacement cost for the new machinery. Whereas the surveyor is saying, I'll pay you cleaning up cost. I can't pay you new. How do you resolve this? Is it uh, something that can be resolved at all? If it is going to be brutal reply, we don't go by the sentiments. But every insurer or everybody must honor the functionality. An equipment, end of the day, is to work after the loss or should be saleable. So if the functionality is lost by water, if, say, it can be clean, if it can be proven it can be clean, or if efforts are taken to make it functional by cleaning and yet it's not working, then it should warrant a total loss, meaning it should get a replacement. Or if a part of it can be replaced, say, control panel can be replaced, the rest of the part can be cleaned and can be worked together, we will work towards a practical approach. Correct. So in the case that I was mentioning, the uh, industry where the MSME owner was okay, if it is his own machinery, which is using for manufacturing, he said, I can clean up and then I can, I can bear cleaner costs. It's okay if you allow that. But if I'm manufacturing a machinery, that's a brand new machinery that's lying there, and I'm going to supply it to my customer, my end customers are MNCs or they are top Indian corporates, they will not buy a flood damaged machinery, a flood damaged. So you have to allow the new cost. That was a dispute in that. There are some practical issues in this. Yeah. If you are a surveyor, what do you do? That's what every surveyor will insist on a functionality. Okay. So the fact that water has entered will not be delayed. But whether water entry has caused disruption to the working of the machine will have to be explored and checked. There can be a situation where we have said 3,000 vendor line items. Obviously, we cannot check all the things. There is a practical uh, what to say, random check will be. Yeah. Random size can be 200, it can be 250. Definitely, it's not, say, 80% of the product. Okay. Uh, Mr. Venkat, very, very important question that I want to ask you, especially a topic for the day. Uh, we have major uh, weather system. They say light rain, heavy rains. So the major rainfall in a, in a geography, let's say our Chennai and surrounding district, then uh, there is a claim reported. In the particular factory, there is no flood. The uh, water just fell through the roof. The stock or machinery got damaged by rainwater. 
there is no collection of water, there is no flood. So how do we understand whether the damage caused to my factory, uh, I may be even having a warehouse, damage uh, caused to my assets by rainwater, is it something I can claim under any of the product that you explained, either a Sukshma product below 5 crores, or a Lagu product between 5 crore and 50 crores, or a standard fire insurance policy if it's above 50 crores, can damage by rainwater be claimed? Uh, let me start saying that all losses to the cyclone, flood, storm, those kind of events are covered. Now, rainwater damage it, it comes from, I would like to look at it from two points. One, rainwater like we had in the downpour of the yesteryears when we had Chennai floods. There's so much of downpour, there is water buildup, inundation or let's say water level rise across the city that causes damage that's called inundation under the policy and that's fine but if there is no water accumulation ground up but the loss is only due to water drop and stop today's policies don't cover that any other policies none of those three policies cover that so the risks that are mentioned are storm typhoon flood cyclone etc etc it's it's named and the rain is not named as well. Uh, well, it might not be uh, the right forum, but yet, for those of the risk where the summit should more than 100, where there's a higher level of policy available, called industrial all risk policy, there even rain for that. But when we are addressing the issue to tiny sector organizations, there are no policies today which offer a purely rainfall related damage wherein there is no loss ground. I mean, if there is a mere rain water damage, I, the side window was open, I kept up bags of cement, rain water fell on, there is no way we can so I'll give you a quick example. Where there were stacks of thermalic bags okay. and water droplets fell. Let's say the stack was 10 sacks high. The bottom three stacks were damaged because of water activation. And the top two stacks were damaged because of now the bottom three will be paid, the top two will be paid. Yeah. So before we go for uh, Mr. Sampath, I want to come back to you with this another important feature of any of these policies which we must tell our audience about. Uh, people who know some insurance call it dynamo clause. Uh, the other way of asking this question is if my yeah, I insured my plant in uh, either a Sukshma policy or a Lagu policy or a standard fire policy. Please mute yourself, Mr. Ananda Padmanabhan. Mr. Sampath, question again. If there is a breakdown, if there is a short circuit, uh, some kind of a similar event would the policy pay? Uh, there are a number of policies, but I think our present discussion primarily is on five policies. Yes. There is machinery breakdown insurance, there is electronic equipment insurance, all those will pay for breakdown and related events. But a simple fire policy in whatever name you call a Lego policy or a standard fire policy will not pay for a breakdown. Now, there can be a situation where a breakdown occurs. And there is subsequently a loss. Or uh, there can be a fire in an electrical equipment which spread elsewhere. Now, every policy would exclude the cost of loss, but we pay for the resultant cost. Meaning, if fire were to start in air conditioner, the air conditioner would get seized, but the value of air conditioner would get excluded. If other property is damaged by fire, the resultant fire, even though it was a faulty air conditioner. The cost of loss being fire, it would be. So that's the operation of what is called the dynamo clause. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Venkat, uh, uh, can you throw light on any of the any of the challenges you would think a business owner would face when it comes to? We spoke about the adequacy of some insured or the impact of under insurance. Then we spoke about the operation of warranties, which can work as a restrictive feature of, uh, uh, of a claim, it can either get the claim entirely denied 
or it can restrict the claim the, the way the, the warranty would operate. Uh, any other examples of challenges faced by uh, claimants in a flood claim? When I say challenges, deductions in the claim. What would be deductions in the claim which a business owner would face? He will think I claim one crore and he will expect one crore. If you're not going to get one crore, what would be the deductions you see in the policy? One of the most uh, trickiest part on those flood claims, which leaves many an area of argument is when, uh, let's say, goods are washed away, some part of the stocks are washed away. Now, that's always an area of contention unless you have some uh, you know, records to prove. It's going to be difficult. Suppose contrasting it with a situation where you were damaged for doing that, that you can assert it. But what, let's say, 10 cartons out of 20 cartons are washed away. It's going to be difficult for you to establish that there were actually 20 cartons. That's something which you've seen happen in a very, very practical manner with many of the Addressing the question of what would be the directions which will come on a claim. Uh, one of the things which they must understand is in every policy, there is something called an excess, which means you know, excess. Excess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the best case scenario of a claim being settled is the best case. I'm not trying to that's all right. That's what you The Three, when you repair your machinery or when you replace your machinery or when you rebuild your building, the cost of replacing it by the same type of machinery is paid, subject to adequacy of some sort of it. But suppose I had a machinery which was producing four units and machinery is five years old, four units an hour. Now I buy a latest market. Twenty percent of the replacement value, calling it an improvement of machine. Now, it's a helpless situation because you are not getting a machinery market. You got an improved machinery, but that improvement cost all percentage of improvement, sir. Uh, and how? Know, we would love it if it's so objective, like the example that I call in reality, you don't have such objectivity. Who decides? It is subjective. It is surveyors, insurers. As the views of insured are taken, and we've got strong views to prove his case. It's a subjective decision which is arrived at. It's a consensus uh, decision which is arrived. So the deductions a uh, typical policyholder would uh, see in a claim, in a flood claim, largely will be the policy excess, the deductible which the, the insured has to bear a portion of the claim, which is uh, defined as excess or deductible in the policy. Second is if the damaged goods are sold off in the market. So salvage buyers, the realization from the sale uh, comes to the credit of the customer that is deducted from the claim. And third will be I bought, a, I had a machinery which is 20 years old. I replaced it in 2024. It had many uh, improved features. The surveyor will uh, on his own uh, uh, fix percentage to be deducted from the machinery value which is allowing towards improvement. These are large dedu deductions in the line. So I, I think we have run 15 minutes. So we have a 10, 15 minutes to go for question answer. Ms. Kanti, the house is open for questions. You can unmute any participant who wants to ask questions. Okay, sir. If you have any questions, kindly please raise hands. I will unmute yourself. There is a question given in the uh, chat box. Yes, sir. Uh, One question has been raised in the chat box. Yeah, I think you are able to read it, sir, or shall I read uh, it? Can you read it? Uh, I think um, some of this better you could take it. The gist of the question is they say in case of motor, the level into which the car was submerged, the insurers have a percentage they, when they go for a total loss analysis. Is there such a methodology for machinery losses due to force? See, it says for example, up to dashboard level, generally yes. considered a total loss. Yes. Well, we'll ask the question. Question from Mr. Bharat Sharma. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bharat Sharma, your question is absolutely right. We have had a lot of claims like this. These are primarily designed by the manufacturers and mostly these work for new cars. 
mostly what to say unregistered vehicles with the dealers that to motor vehicles motor vehicles so what happens is generally up to uh, floor level they they said one thing up to that board level then when the vehicle is submerged and depending on where the uh, electronic components are located it's easier to decide what will be the percentage of loss or whether it will be determined as a total loss now machineries can pose a lot of intriguing questions in the sense like it can be different machineries there cannot be a universal methodology but yet most likely we will adopt that of the manufacturer provided you are going to repair that with the manufacturer and if you have an internal expertise and if your engineers are able to evaluate and exhibit the extent of damage the large extent insurer and the surveyors will abide by whatever you are presenting uh, that's what i talked about consensus yes it's consensus based on information that's provided so being an insurer i would like to uh, what to say tell to you all insurers are indeed friendly we also want to settle claims amicably without I mean wherever it is it can be flexed in a practical manner we are willing to any other questions uh Ms. Kanti, any questions in the chat box you can unmute any participant who wants to ask questions you are muted uh miss kanti you are muted Yes, sir, they can uh, unmute themselves, sir. It's open only. But, uh, but Mr. Sampath talking about friendliness of insurance with a smile was message in itself. Yeah. No, the, for, for the benefit of audience, the stakeholders in a flood insurance claim would be number one, the policy holder, uh, number two, the insurer, they are the parties to the contract. Number three would be the independent surveyors who are professionals who are uh, uh, expected to evaluate the claim and make a recommendation uh, whether the subject matter is covered in the policy and also to provide a computation of the loss to be paid. These are the important stakeholders and incidentally there have to be advisors like insurance brokers uh, who will be assisting the customer in the claim process. So, while waiting for questions, I just wanted to put in a thought for everyone. See, many a time uh, spending time on insurance, entrusting the job to the right professional is, uh, it alleviates the pain significantly in the event of pain. Having a, you know, an important, um, as I always tell a lot of people whom I meet, you don't always have to go for the most economical option when it comes to choosing an advisor or choosing an insurance company. Choose your service provider. I mean, I have to, in today's world, when you're going to have a, a medical uh, you know, sort of intervention, you don't want to choose the cheapest uh, offering that's available. You would choose based on other factors. So it's important that you choose the right professional to support you. Who will support you in your endeavor or who will be your? Uh, the bare minimum you will be able to do it if you have the support of a good profession. Any closing remarks, uh, Mr. Samuel? We will wait for some questions. Any questions coming? No question from Manish, sir. Altogether. The question is, uh, there is another question, but that's a motor question. We'll from Manish. Yeah, no. Yeah. That is, that's, that's on the reference to motor vehicle. Yeah, when we keep, so we'll have another session on the flood claims affecting cars. We'll have a separate session, Mr. Manish. We'll limit today's discussion to MSME and SME owners who may face a flood insurance claim under their property insurance policies. You're welcome to ask any questions related to that. No. Uh, 
So no questions coming for Mr. Sankar, uh, closing statement from you. Sir, uh, in some months of terms, we would be very happy to have discussions with the policy holder at the time of taking policy itself. Write down whatever questions you have about insurance. Come to the insurer, come to the broker. Wherever we have, we will have a meeting. It will eliminate a lot of unwanted queries in the unfortunate of the queue. That's good, sir. I want to just add, uh, come to SIKI Insurance Committee and we'll be able to uh, provide you some guidance as to uh, what is the correct way. So to wrap up uh, the contents of today's discussion, uh, to expect a fair and reasonable and uh, satisfactory claim process, the key is in correctly insuring your business. So it's a correct description of your subject matter, your factory, the, uh, mentioning that the correct address mentioned, correct location is mentioned. If you had two uh, premises on two sides of the road, make sure that both the plot numbers are correctly mentioned and uh, ensure that the correct product is uh, issued uh, and the period, the, the premium paid, everything is correctly mentioned in the policy. And also to beware uh, and to uh, take note of uh, these pro provisions called warranties, make sure that you know what warranties are. If you don't understand what the warranties mean, you should ask the insurer what is the meaning of these warranties, beware of warranties. As uh, all of us discussed, every other insurance policy, you could find warranties mentioned. Just to understand the meaning of that. And uh, when it comes to a claim, make sure that uh, you behave as, as though you are uninsured. Make sure you take photographs or videos and preserve records. And I've seen very practical for you to have secondary information uh, recorded or stored somewhere. These days, uh, backup uh, of uh, stock registers, backup of statements, backup of all the other uh, stock records or invoices, maintain soft copy in, in a remote location or even on the cloud. Uh, could be advisable. So make sure that you have backup records and uh, ensure that uh, you provide whatever information is required by the insurance company and the insurance surveyor. Then the claim sh should go through. We are happy to uh, assist you if you have any questions after the session. You can email to Siki and then we'll be very happy to respond on those questions. Uh, we are uh, building up this uh, insurance knowledge sharing activity for uh, Siki members and the non members. Uh, down the line in the month of November and December. We are planning a few more topics. Uh, for example, there could be a, a session on surety bond for uh, contractors and construction companies, okay. new product called surety bond. Uh, we could bring in, there can be a definitely, uh, going with the response to this, today's session, uh, there could be a session on anatomy of a fire insurance claim, start to finish what a policyholder goes through when he reports a fire insurance claim. The other, other challenges one has to know about. We'll bring in that kind of content also. So I would thank uh, Kanti and the team in Siki for coordinating this. Uh, we are happy to be part of uh, Siki's uh, activities and bring value to members. So I thank uh, all the participants for their time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. I thank the panelists for uh, sparing time to to be here. Hello. Thank you. I think someone is uh, someone is uh, asking questions, sir. Sir, uh, I just have one question, sir. That is Mr. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, So I'm from a chemical manufacturing uh, company, sir. So we were also affected yeah. by the loss uh, last year in December. And uh, my question is, uh, see, uh, with all the damaged uh, finished goods and uh, work in progress material, should the overhead costs like labor costs, electricity costs be included in the uh, this thing, the claim amount? So to understand it better, how are we arriving at the cost that is being claimed? And then at the last, we'll compare it with the value issue. Now, if your question is on a finished product, and are we claiming it as a total loss, meaning like it is being abandoned, or are we getting into some reprocessing? So it is completely uh, damaged. Right, sir. Now, when it is damaged, what is going to be your claim cost? Ideally, ideally, it should be the raw material class, raw material cost, plus the expenses that went into making it till the stage of production that at the time of loss. So the raw material will be a raw material purchase cost. No, no, if, 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 if it is going to be a finished product, 
They are coming on the other yes. issue of that. Yes, yes. I have raw materials in premises, I have work in process, and I have finished goods. So raw material will be at the purchase cost. Yes. I produce invoices, I can maybe what will the landed. Yeah, and that at which they came to the factory. Whatever it is. So I produce invoices, that's the proof, right. and I claim if it work in progress. With the raw metal cost plus the uh, labor cost and the power cost, whatever is input cost, yes, that is added to that. I established by a cost uh, accountant certificate, yes, I can get the work in progress. And as far as finished uh, the product is concerned, I can claim the cost incurred for manufacturing it. Every bit of uh, overhead that is that is uh, uh, brought in to manufacture it, exactly. except All the profit margin. Exactly. Then no, we are not concerned with the selling price charge, so no profit margin. Yes. But the manufactured cost of finished product is paid. Yes. Mr. Sirish, did that answer your question? Yes, sir. It, it did. But uh, I mean, that is the discussion now going on with the insurance companies because they are not accepting uh, to give the overhead costs like uh, electricity, labor, what is, the, what is the dispute? Sir? What is the dispute? No, they are not agreeing to give the overhead costs. That's the thing. Uh, that dispute is still going on. And also, what yeah, maybe questions? Yeah. So, yeah. so go ahead. So finally, we are not satisfied uh, with the claim amount. They are, uh, you know, they are going to give us the final claim yeah. amount. Uh, what do we do? What is the steps uh, we should do? What is the what is the difference, sir? You claim hundred rupees. Are they offering you thirty rupees, fifty rupees, seventy rupees, or ninety rupees? Uh, they are offering what? us around uh, maybe fifty rupees, fifty to sixty rupees only, sir. Yeah, the options are 50, actually fifty rupees only. Yeah. Yeah, so the options are if it's not a, a, a big claim, sir. So just sorry for okay, inter interrupting you. Sir, let us not first talk about whether it is 50% or 60%. Sir. When the insurance company is offering you X value, the company, as also the surveyor, should be in a position to explain how they have arrived at that value. Now, if they are leaving out any significant part of your expenses claim, just ask them why such expenses are not. Now, if it is going to be simply 50 per 60 per cent, then that is not the right process. There can be a stage where you cover, you say, claim, say, some X cost, and surveyor is disallowing that cost. Whether there are any such areas of dispute, then whether there are any difference in valuation, meaning the costing, how they are arriving at the cost. And if nothing of this is worked together, there is always a reconciliation process. You can talk to the insurer directly with the uh, surveyor, of course. Many a times it can be reconciled with discussions. Or if nothing of this works, you have the options of going in, going for arbitration or to a consumer forum or to a court of law, which generally is not very desirable because. It is going to put you into difficulty. Insurers also may experience some difficulty. So, in theory, uh, Mr. Srish, in theory, if you are not satisfied with the claim, there is a big uh, deduction of the claim. You are not getting 100%. Uh, there is a major cut. In theory, the first step is to uh, exhaust the grievance uh, department of the insurer. If you like to go through that, if uh, uh, you are not happy with the outcome of a grievance process, then you have the consumer forum. Depending on the premium that you incurred, based on the premium value either a district forum or a state commission you can approach uh, and uh, uh, the, the civil court is always there as a final uh, uh, recourse you can approach the commercial court uh, in chennai and file a case but the civil court process is much much longer it can take years to conclude uh, relatively shorter process could be a consumer forum where maybe two three years uh, it can come to a close but if it's only about a dispute in quantum uh, and if it's a relatively larger claim, when I say larger claim, I'm talking of 1 crore, 3 crore, 5 crore, that kind of a volume, then you should think of arbitration. The claim is admitted uh, under the policy, it's a flood. There's no dispute about what caused the loss, but the dispute is on the value. You can think of arbitration where the, the an arbitrator will listen to both sides and give an award. And uh, many times the insurance company could obey the arbitrator's arbitration award. Is that okay? Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you are suggesting to go for arbitration, basically. Arbitrary. If there's only a dispute involved, if you if it's only a 10 lakh claim, rupee claim and dispute is about 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs, arbitration may not be worthwhile because the cost of arbitration could be quite high. 
but if uh, it's a volume that I'm uh, talking about, maybe one crore, three crores, five crores, that's the kind of uh, size of the claim, then arbitration could be worthwhile. Okay, okay. So arbitration in the consumer forum, is it? No, no, no. Arbitrator, <laughs> provided in the policy itself, you look at the policy wording, arbitration is mentioned. Uh, of course, what is the latest position as far as arbitration is the subject of another lo longer debate, but that process is available. Uh, an arbitrator is a neutral person, usually a retired uh, senior official of insurance company, a retired uh, uh, district court judge or high court judge, or a practicing lawyer or a very, very senior insurance surveyor is a professional who will, uh, the expectation is he will listen to both sides and take an independent viewpoint. If he thinks the insurance company is justified, he will say, yes, this is what is, uh, I am satisfied with the assessment, but an independent professional viewpoint would have been uh, made available. Or if the claimant is right, if he feels that what the insurance company is offering is lower, the arbitrator is free to offer the higher amount. And uh, in many cases, the insurance company felt it is better to satisfy the arbitration award and, and then close the case. The arbitration could be a useful exercise. Okay, okay. And court. This process will take, sir, arbitration. It depends, sir, maybe depends, it depends on the complications, the technical feature. It can get concluded within one and a half months to two months also. Okay. It okay. Right. Much, it's a stretch for, for years also, depending on the, suppose there's a 100 crore or a 200 crore value claim, it may stretch to years also. Because so too many areas of the claim could be in dispute. Okay, right, so thank you, thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Ms. Khan. Uh, I think uh, we can bring the session to a close. We look forward to another session for uh, Sikki yes, members. Sir, yes. And we'll, we'll meet again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.